All right, it's time for the extra. Anything goes. <laughs> See, it's not the same when I do it. I just, <laughs> I just look like somebody that should be arrested. We'll see. <laughs> did you, did you chop up the whole family? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think I found my new Halloween costume. <laughs> Anywho, let's fade out the music real, real delicate. Nice like. Welcome to the Extra, Hometown Extra. This is where we just keep on talking, and we talk about just about anything that strikes our fancy. We uh, uh, don't really have any rules. If you're going to be offended, this is going to be where you get offended. <laughs> this is uh, our uh, anything goes part. I mean, really. So uh, we're going to be talking about uh, the church uh, haunted houses. houses. Yeah. yeah, I call them judgment houses because that's what the first one I, mean, I ever went really, to is called. Yeah. But it really encapsulates the what it is yeah, yeah. <laughs> and i've been to them so i'm not just talking uh theoretical yes. and it's not going to be from any particular dislike of any particular religion or anything i'm judging them on their own merits uh from the point of view of be a good person so we'll get back to that that'll be that'll be a little bit later on yeah. uh there are a few things we didn't get to fit into hometown this week uh, episode twelve. Did I even say what episode number it was on Hometown? I don't no. think I did. It was home. It was episode twelve. That's uh, twenty one. Is the episode That's number? A lot. Yeah, man. yeah. We're trucking toward a Amazing, amazingly consistent. Apparently yeah. Thursday nights are good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because uh, I think I've got the next couple still. Because mm -hmm. honestly, it, we've said before. Eventually, we can't do one. And I bet the first one we don't do, Thanksgiving. Oh, I bet you're right. I bet that's the first yeah. one we can't do. Or, or if we do, it'll just be me sitting at my parents' house. Like, that's right. Oh, I'll be on Skype. I'll I don't like, have anything to say. <laughs> food. Oh, I wish I could eat like that again. Uh, a I whole other thing. Thanksgiving food. It's pretty good, yeah. My mom makes the best broccoli and cheese casserole. Oh, a good broccoli cheese casserole. My sister makes broccoli salad with uh, ramen noodles. Ooh. And that's fantastic. Yeah. She, like, strips... It must take forever. She strips the uh, broccoli down into little strips and huh. then mixes it with all kinds of other stuff. Yeah. Oh, it's so good. Uh, that'll be the Thanksgiving episode. Uh, yeah. Next week, okay, this is, you're watching this on a Tuesday. Uh, so we're exactly one week away right. from Halloween. Exactly. So uh, this is going to be, oh, come on, calendar. Calendar doesn't want to talk to me. I'll use a different calendar. Uh -oh. Computers are stupid. Computers are dumb. But it didn't stop recording during the first showing. And that's true, and we're still recording now. Yeah. <laughs> made me paranoid. Uh, so Tuesday the 24th is today. Yes. <laughs> that's the day that this will be uh, uh, re-aired on our uh, hometown J uh, hometown East and Sea site, which is hometownjc.com. Uh, so we're just, we just got about a week to go. Yeah. I'm sure that by then... My Halloween costume will be complete. Um, I was telling Bailey just a minute ago, I'm missing one component. Yeah, an important component. Yeah, so uh, you'll see, uh, if you're watching this on Tuesday, you'll see this next week. No, you will not. Oh, that's right. You'll see it on. That's right. Two, in two days, uh, on Thursday. Time is not my friend. No. <laughs> no. But let's get out of the way some of the stuff that I didn't have a chance to get to. We wanted to get... On the episode, we wanted to get to our horror movie reviews, and so yeah. we listed our favorite horror movies, and the moment we finished listing them, I had an idea of like 10 more, but not going to do those. We, yeah. we had made a list of, of movies that didn't quite hit the mark. I don't know if we're going to do that. We'll see. I mean, we kind of did it before. Yeah. Uh, we, touched on, we touched on the highlights. Yeah. But uh, in the meantime, let's talk about the, the mentions. We went to uh, Facebook. Facebook said, here's what's coming up in the next week a lot of these i'm sorry may have passed by now but if you're watching us live you're going to get the scoop right. before it happens so hey dj ray hey. good to have you still there i'm glad i'm glad you hung out with us a little bit uh dj ray is from Asheville. you're in, we consider you part of the uh actually uh, he's from a little outside of Asheville. we consider you part of the east tennessee, uh, east tennessee really? region just because yeah. this is you stick a pin in Johnson City, and you radiate out about an hour, an hour and a half in every direction. And that's what we like talking well, about. Well, what is it? Maybe I've mentioned it before, but even uh, 
I mean, we won't include all these areas, but uh, from Johnson City, you do a, you know, a circle around it of six hours each, and you are in, yeah. you're, you are six hours away from two thirds of the American population. Yeah, yeah, and it's six hours. it's five hours to most most big cities in any yeah. direction. Yeah. You go to the north, it's Cincinnati. To the west, it's Nashville. To the south, it's Atlanta. Atlanta. And if you go five and a half hours or six hours, Charleston on yeah. the coast, Myrtle Beach, if you're yep. into that. If you're into the whole beach thing. No, I don't really Charlotte hate. is three hours. You know what I hate about the beach? What? Every time I'm there, people start splashing water on me, trying to send me back out to sea. Such a pain. Yeah, God. A, I'm like, guys. Chill out, guys. Oh, well. Did you? I, can I? Never what? mind. What? There was a cure, the dead whale cure, a long, long, long time ago, where a dead whale that had holes in it from rotting, uh, people would with like rheumatoid arthritis would be stuck in these holes for like, you know. In the whale hole? In the in the rotting whale hole, <laughs> and left for like twenty four hours. Oh. But continue. Well, now all I can think about is whale holes. Riding whale holes. Oh, uh, mentions. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> uh, we had Sherry Cooper, an uh, old friend of mine from high school. I should say a friend of mine from high school. Uh, I'm not making a judgment. Uh, she says that uh, Food Forest Friday is a fall celebration, October 21st. That's on a Saturday. Uh 5 p.m. Oh. at 500 Wilson Avenue. I, I think I wrote that down because I put Food Forest Friday. <laughs> and it's on a Saturday, yeah. but maybe not. I don't know. But Food Forest is going to happen October 21st, uh, 5 p.m. at 500 Wilson Avenue. Uh, they're going to have, it's a just a local local yeah. food potluck. Yeah. And Sherry is leading the charge in local food, uh, trying to get people to make uh, inner city gardens, mm-hmm. uh, grow their own food, and do something with so that food. the three of you here need to go. Because by the yeah. time this posts... Yeah, that'll be this weekend. That's going to be this weekend. Uh, sorry, we, we just ran out of time yeah. with the main we'll episode. We'll post it on the Facebook page. Yeah, definitely. Too. Or we will have done it. We will have had done that by now. Yes, probably. Uh, tenses. <laughs> uh, Paul Ravenwood said that he went to Fender's Corn Maze uh, last week, and he had a great time at yeah. it. I've never been to Fender's. You've never been to Fender's? No. That's the only one I've ever been to. No, I, I'm more of the haunted house, and, yeah. and I'll drive... Now, many times I've driven to Atlanta to Netherworld Haunted House, which is the greatest haunted house yeah. I've ever seen. And it is intense, and these people are all to, theater professionals. you have to sign a waiver? I don't remember signing a waiver. there's one in L.A. where you have to sign a waiver. I think you're signing a waiver when you buy your ticket at Netherworld. I think that's actually part of, on the back of the ticket, it has, by buying this ticket, you have agreed that we can do anything we want to. Mm-hmm. But uh, Netherworld is world class. Uh, horror yeah. uh, haunted house. Uh, I've never, I've never seen anything like it. Yeah. Uh, there's one room. You the first time we walked in, this is years ago. Uh, the room had a net over the top of, it, but you couldn't see it. So you're just mm. in a room, and the and the ceiling's dark with a net, and then a light comes on, and there's a guy throwing barrels into the net. Oh. <laughs> so so you're looking up, and the net catches yeah. it right above your head, but he's really throwing oh barrels at you. Oh my god. Yeah. And it's that's how it starts. Yeah. <laughs> and it uh, keeps on going like that. And they have false walls and places where people can crawl over the top yeah. of the walls where you don't see them. It's really good. Yeah. Uh, that has nothing to do with Fender's Corn Maze, though. Yeah. Fender's Corn Maze is good. Um, I think they have nights where it's not haunted. They have haunted nights and not haunted nights. That's more your speed. The non-haunted nights are more my speed. So if, if you saw the Thursday show or you watched ten minutes ago... Um, <laughs> And we were talking about movies. I'm the same with, like, haunted stuff. Like, I like the creepy walking around a corn maze all alone at night yeah. kind of feel. Um, <laughs> That's awesome. Whereas he actually wants things to jump out I don't. I don't mind it. I'm, I mean, I'm, I've spent most of my life, I was. I, I said in the last episode, or the, the actual episode 12, that I was a scared kid. And I was really nervous, and over the years I learned to deal with it and... Now it takes really scary stuff. No. I mean, a surprise, you know, you're wired to jump. But it's not, I don't get a lot of pleasure out of that. It doesn't really hit me too hard. Well, you know, that's why I think I really like spooky stuff instead. Because you can't, well, I mean, you can't, there's no build up from that. Yeah. Like, spooky stuff will always be kind of spooky and creepy because you can't, 
And spooky stuff's a little more intellectual. It makes you... It, it creates an atmosphere that you're living in. And then when you get out of the movie, I think it's more likely to stay yeah. with you. Because yeah. if I watched a movie alone in my apartment, in my our old uh, techno-bohemian <laughs> compounds, and it's a spooky, creepy movie... I'm going to wake up ten times that night right. wondering what that creek is. I sleep like a baby after a horror movie. Yeah, because you watch the ones that are, you know there's not going to be someone coming That's in here. That's a good point. That's a good point. That's All the zombie. stuff I watch is really over the top. It's, right, so you know it's not going to yeah, happen. That's a, good, that's a really good point. Oh my God, you've, you've uh, analyzed me. And you're right, I think. A lot of good it'll do you. <laughs> I know. Uh, DJ Ray says Spooky Woods what is what they have in Asheville. Oh, okay. Yeah, that sounds really cool. I, I've, I grew up in the woods, so I would have a lot of fun with Spooky. And they used to do over that sounds really good. Over at Rotary Park in Johnson City in the late 90s, they would do a, a fright walk, I think is what yeah. they called it. And you would walk through Rotary Park, and they would have people. And it was a haunted, the whole park was a haunted house. And I would, I would love that, because my first thought is, what I would love to see if I did that is like, you know the really big swings at the very back? Yeah. Like having yeah. just a little ghost kid. <laughs> they did like, that. That's exactly what they had. And they were singing the, the Freddy song from Nightmare on Elm Street. Because they were all movie gotcha. inspired. Because the guy that created the alien costume yeah. for the movie, the original Alien, yeah. lives in Kingsport. And he was making prosthetics for a lot of this stuff. And they had his original alien costume there. I take it back. What would have been better than the one kid is like the two kids from The Shining. Oh, that, yeah. Come just the, play with us. The spooky twins. And they could say that because they're on swing sets. Play. Next Halloween, you and I could be the spooky twins from yes. The Shining. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um. That would scare people. Uh, oh, talking about uh, uh, Sherry's uh, food forest, uh, Jason in the chat room says he loves that idea. He installed three backyard gardens this year. That's awesome, man. I wish I had. I wish we had space at the Techno Bohemian Compound. Yeah, the best we can do is maybe window boxes, and those are probably going to get stolen. Yeah. That's just inviting someone to climb up no. on the ga- the compound. And or the yourself. squirrels and raccoons would steal our squirrels. tomatoes. They're living in the walls, using the bathroom. That's a real horror film. Using the bathroom the other day. You know, you're hanging out. I'm hanging out there, like, reading the graffiti on my own wall. <laughs> and right back here in the wall, I start hearing... I'm going to do this on the microphone. Uh, and it was, it, was, it was a horror movie. It's like, oh, those little bastards... Yeah. And I keep telling my neighbor, I'm like, I think you got squirrels in your wall. Like, Don't be ridiculous. Like a horror movie. They never <laughs> believe you. No, nope, they never believe you. But you can hear it. It's digging. It's slowly eating its way through something every night. It's. Oh, and there was a ne- there was a nearby house from where we are that I saw the other day, a uh, rat, like, running down their porch. And I went, <laughs> yeah, you stay there. Yeah. Stay at that house. That was a whole nother. That was that. Was, good thing we weren't doing a show when when that oh, was I happening know. because we yeah. would have stopped the middle of the show. It's like there it is. Get it. Get, get it! it. That actually would have been pretty entertaining. <laughs> That's true. We we would have just set up the camera and watched us chase yeah. a rat around your apartment for a while. Chapin, how many times? Three times. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it was Before it was a I mystery. Before I killed the sucker. That's right. <laughs> Bailey's Bailey day one. Oh, I don't want to hurt a cr- living creature. I'm Buddhist. Bailey Bailey day. Like month thirty, like, yeah. kill that little bastard. When I felt it run across my legs at three in the morning, oh. that's when I went, okay. Oh. Now, because I'm not afraid of rats, I don't. I, they don't freak me out. Yeah, but but ugh. feeling them in the middle of the night running across your bed, Mm-mm. <laughs> that was too much. No. And two nights later, that sucker was dead. Yeah. It was. It was. It was. It was tough. We 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 figured out the. The, they had had years to build a little no. transport system through this house. Well, I think they probably did it before, and then when they knocked down... Right. Like you said, at the time, they, knocked down... The old Memorial Hospital got knocked down, and that was where like they were probably rat living, heaven. And they got pushed Into the neighborhoods. And, yeah. and it was right after that that suddenly yeah. we were swarmed, yeah. literally. And in fact, they tore the city tore out a swarm of rats... Just like across the street, it was, it was a whole bank. It was so infested with rats, and they could they they made the person that owned the apartments next to it uh, buy new trash cans that had lids, metal yeah. trash cans, because yeah. they had eaten through the plastic. Yeah. And the entire bank, about a ten foot space of dirt, was just tunnels. And they came back and they dug out all that dirt. Yeah. And the city took it away and yeah. they put concrete in all the holes in the pavement. 
it was an infestation. So, uh, yeah, so. and I mean, we, we both lived here a very, very long time, and that's the only time we've ever yeah, had a rat problem, absolutely. just to be clear. <laughs> yeah, but, and, and I think circumstances and that huge building being knocked down I think that had disrupted be. everything. When you said that, when this was happening, when he said that, I was like, yeah. And the same thing happened, I'm told, downtown yeah. uh, when there were a couple storefronts that had just been abandoned for years. They were just empty and broken out glass and they had built wooden door fronts over it to keep anybody from getting near. And then they finally started fixing it up and they, they've remodeled into beautiful stuff. I don't know if you've seen some of these places. Right across from Willow Tree, it's yeah. looking great. Oh, it is. It's looking very cool. But when they started working there again, all of the creepy crawlies got pushed out into the surrounding buildings. Yep. And so there's, I'm not going to say where, there's been a few times I'm sitting in a couple of the of the establishments, not just one, and here come all kinds of bugs just walking across where I'm and eating. like, oh, cool. <laughs> and that's when somebody explains, you like, know. I'm sorry, we, we spray and spray and spray, but they got displaced. Yeah. So hopefully it'll be under control. Uh, it's probably under control now. It, yeah. Um, it's been a while. Uh, we talked about... Uh, Biller gave us the, the tip on restoring the Bonnie Kate. Uh, mm-hmm. We talked about that last episode. Uh, the Ornid Meteor Shower, I think, is over by now, right? Uh, Orionid Meteor Orionid. Shower. Orionid. Sorry. Orionid. No, you're right. I Just so people know how to look it up. Um, it's this weekend. So. It's this weekend. What, what about that meteor shower over the weekend, huh, Bailey? So good. Did you see all the shooting stars? They amazing. were all over the place. I hope you saw it. Unless it was overcast, then it was too bad we missed it. To be fair, most meteor showers last four weeks. Yeah. The peak is this weekend. Right. So if you want to see the meteor shower, and if you've never seen a meteor shower, it's cool as fuck. Yeah. Um, go out, seriously, at like 2, 3 a.m. Um, you, you can go earlier, um, like after the sun is down, any time. But the peak is going to be... Like, at night, the best chance you're going to see is at, like, 3 in the morning. Right. Go somewhere like, as dark as you can. Looks like as early as midnight for this one, and that that's, of course, uh, yeah. we've already we've already missed our, our window on that by the time this airs. But if you're watching this live, uh, Friday morning the, of the 20th, 21st, and 22nd of October, it's saying around 1 a.m. Central Time, that's midnight uh, Eastern. And really, honestly, this, t- I mean... Today, Tuesday, you could probably still see them. Like yeah. I said, meteor showers yeah. last a lot longer than people think um, because it's they're meteors, so it's like a little pack, a little pack of meteors. Right. That are there are some tailing along, so you can go try to see it still. And it looks like the only night that it's really going to be marked as good is going to be Friday, as far so for the tomorrow, peak. So tomorrow night for our live. Yeah, you, it'll be okay on Saturday, and it looks like it's just like every other night yeah. coming up on Sunday. So uh, Friday and Saturday looks like the time to watch that. It's pretty cool. Thank yeah. you for that tip, Biller. We we do yeah. appreciate you. I love uh, good that's something time. I would have missed. Oh, here's one. Uh, over the weekend, I went to Conapalooza. Mm-hmm. I only had time. I, I had a gig in Chattanooga, so I had Friday night only. Mm-hmm. So I uh, grabbed a couple friends, went to... Uh, Exit 7 in Bristol, checked it out. They did, by the time we got there, everything was over. All the panels were pretty much over. Uh, they had some gaming. They had Cuphead on a, on a game system, which what's looked kind of cool. It's a It's a game that I really want to play. It's based on 1930s cartoons. Huh. And so it looks it looks like you're playing a 1930s cartoon, and it's just kind of a, a run kind of and cool. shoot and, and yeah. defeat the boss kind of game. Cool. Yeah, it, look, it looks beautiful. That's the only reason I mention it. It's, it's really popular right now. But uh, they only had two events that night, uh, Rocky Horror Picture Show and a drag show. Mm-hmm. So uh, I wanted to see Rocky Horror, but I'd just gotten there and it was starting, and I ran into a bunch of friends, so I spent the whole first half of Rocky Horror just talking. So I didn't even watch it. I wasn't yeah. even in there. But then uh, the, they went to intermission. I came back out. I know how Rocky Horror ends. I didn't feel like I really missed much of the plot. I went in and watched it, and it was Johnson City Community Theater, uh, and it was them doing the same version of Rocky Horror they do here at uh, the John City Community Theater on Maple Street, I think. Uh, they um, they really did a good job. I mean, Rocky Horror is not exactly Shakespeare. <laughs> and they took some liberties and kind of cleaned it up and made it fam- a little more family-friendly in a couple parts. Boring. And... I wish they had taken some chances, yeah. you know, but 
I understand people in their underwear don't want to do certain things, but come on, it's a Rocky Horror Picture Show. Uh, like the the point where uh, there's a song called "Touch It, Touch It, Touch Me," and before that, there's uh, a scene where uh, Frankenfurter is seducing Brad and Janet. It's funny. It's just ridiculous. But uh, in this, they used uh, the servants' riffraff in Columbia and two uh, Barbie dolls hmm. to make it show show them making out, and it was. It was all right, but but it was overall it was thoroughly entertaining. Yeah. They welcomed audience participation, so I, ha- I saw Rocky Horror over a hundred times before nineteen ninety five. I had a problem. That was my number one socialization in Johnson City between nineteen, God nineteen eighty nine and nineteen ninety three. Mm-hmm. Friday and Saturday at Real to Real Theaters, they had Rocky Horror. You had Friday people and Saturday people. You, nobody was both. I was a Saturday person. And then I became both. I was like the first person that went to both. So I saw it kind of like, well, every oh, weekend. Again. Yeah. <laughs> and I learned all the lines and I made up lines they still use. But I'll go back locally and people still use lines that me and my friends came up with. But uh, I, so, and my buddy Chad, who we used to go to this Rocky Horror and we would trade, we would chase Rocky Horror to Knoxville yeah. and to beaches in Atlanta. We saw it with Shadowcast, without Shadowcast. And so we had all these lines that we were throwing out, and, and it's becoming a lost art. People watch the videos, and they, re- and they read well, about it, and it's not the same. And I have to say, I think I've mentioned this on the show before, because we've talked about Rocky Horror. I have never seen Rocky Horror. Not on film, not in person, not for any particular reason. Right. Just haven't done it. <laughs> one, um, one day, Rocky Horror's going to be playing, and I'm going to grab you, and I will give you the full experience. It'll happen. And I almost saw it last Friday. Um, but it was just, and this, it was last minute. And I was this like, oh, stage show know. probably shouldn't be your first <laughs> introduction oh, really? to Rocky Horror. It's, I mean. I would assume that would be the first you'd want. It's like. It's more authentic. If your first exposure to uh, X-Files was a community theater production. Oh. It's a different creature. Okay. It, they don't really capture what made the movie great. Okay. What, what they're doing is they're taking the nostalgia of the movie yeah. and they're taking a shadow cast, which is when they perform the, the mo- movie in front of the screen. Right. And uh, they're, they're basically doing a shadow cast without the movie playing. Right. And uh, it's a little bit different. Well, and that's why I've had people tell me I should see the, the stage first because they're like, that's the fun one. But I'm happy to watch the film. I can watch the film anytime. It doesn't. It, it honestly doesn't matter. I'm not saying watch one or the other. I'm just saying, don't expect the stage play to prepare you for what's best about the movie. The best okay. thing about the movie is when you're in a really good theater that has a really good audience that knows the lines that that are willing to have fun with it yeah. and 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 welcome so everybody's the, improv. Wait. So so the movie version is interactive too. The movie version was the original interactive movie. See, I don't know any of this. Okay, let me back up. <laughs> I, I'm totally... I'm Rocky, a Rocky Horror version. In 1989. Yeah. And I think... Uh, you remember Darren? We had him on yeah. as guest. Uh, that was, I think, the first night I ever went to see Rocky Horror. Yeah. And that night, when we got there, I didn't know what to expect. I just know that everybody went to it. Mm-hmm. And so we sat down, and what happened was the movie started, and the audience started yelling out lines and they yelled them out all at the same time and it started with the opening credits yeah. and then as people came out it was elaborately timed the way this yeah. is it's like uh th- there's a point where a character hits another character with a whip and everyone yells point McEnroe and it, the comedy just keeps on coming and it has yeah. to be memorized and timed perfectly yeah. for it to work and the more intricate the timing is the more satisfied the viewers are and a lot of people will try to throw out original stuff, and usually it bombs. Well, because a lot of people aren't right. funny. But through the whole movie, <laughs> you throw a toast. When they say they're going to have a, make a toast, mm-hmm. you throw toast. Uh, when uh, it's it's going to, there's a song called "There's a Light," mm-hmm. and uh, back then you can't do this hardly anymore. When they sang, "There's a lot," they, they would sing the chorus. You lit your lighters, and then when they say "darkness," you turn off your lighters and yell at anybody that still has their lighters lit. Gotcha. And uh, we had squirt guns and all this other stuff that there were props. Uh, great yeah. Scott! When a guy named Scott comes out, you throw toilet paper. Uh, 
<laughs> so it's just a whole thing. Yeah, it is. And the audience participation part is what makes the movie. Mm-hmm. The movie's a total piece of shit. It's a, it's really poorly thought out and poorly executed. Uh, in the years that I've studied it, because I really got into it so much, I studied Richard O'Brien, the creator. I studied what he was thinking when he wrote it. and the, I understand that he is a real visionary and he had a great idea. Yeah. But until you realize what he's thinking, it's just a dumb movie. Yeah. It was supposed to be an, an homage to uh, old horror movies of the 60s and 70s. Mm-hmm. With a little social commentary. It was a little ahead of its time. So, was it not supposed to be funny? No. Were these, the and the audience participation wasn't part of it? No, it was never planned. Oh, see, I didn't even know that. At I the, just thought this was like a, like that was part of it. I found out later that the movie was released in 1975 and was an enormous flop. But then, movie the movie business was different, so theaters would buy... A features and B features. B Holy f- shit, Jesus Christ. Critter? <laughs> that was that was a good horror. Um, I didn't even see it. Um, it was a, one of those little bugs that lives in the walls. Oh, not, I hate not, those little not guys. Not a stink bug. The but long the, ones. And what, what, it was weird. It seriously was like oh. a horror film. Because I was just sitting here with my hands in my lap, like a normal human being. <laughs> and I felt something, oh. like my hand was like this in my lap. And I felt something crawling and I went like this. <laughs> Magic. And there was a little bug in my hand. <laughs> and I was like, what the hell? I don't even, I don't see it. I know, it. I threw it. Gone. Um, so sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. It's okay. You. <laughs> Those things are everywhere right now. They're yeah. swarming on the walls like it's uh, Amity yeah. Bahar. But 7th Street Playhouse was a theater in New York. Yeah. And a bunch of locals, uh, it was playing as a midnight movie. Because back then, it was not uncommon to have a midnight movie. It was usually a crap movie. And, uh, Rocky Horror Picture Show was playing, and people started making fun of it. This little group of friends started mm-hmm. making fun of it. It's like the original, like, Mystery Science Theater. It was. Yeah, it was exactly that kind of thing. And they, uh, in fact, Mystery Science Theater may not have existed if not for Rocky Horror. Mm. Because that makes sense. And so, 75, mm-hmm. 76, uh, these people started bringing in their friends, and it became a whole thing, because it was kind of an artsy district, yeah. too. And uh, then they released, in the late... 70s early 80s the audience participation album which documented a night at this 7th street playhouse where yeah. they were they were playing it and so you hear here's sal piro who was the original guy that started all this uh throwing out his lines and all of and i have the album i have the actual yeah. lp uh, of the audience participation album and that's how i originally learned yeah. by listening to this album and going to rocky horror and so those lines from the audience participation album have become the canon. Those are right. the revered words. But every, if done right, and like anything else that humans fuck up, the, the in some places you do not deviate from the, the agreed upon lines from the audience right. participation album. Others, the best places, are like, come up with something new and we'll love you. Like some of the things that were so wrong back then things you just don't say in public now, right. people are too easily offended, those have to change. I found myself at Rocky Horror uh, Saturday night going, I can't say this line in good conscience. I mean, I'm at a con, I'm surrounded yeah. by by all of, of the uh, uh, LBTQ yeah. uh, uh, oh. folks, yeah. and this is just a horrible thing to say around Ooh. people you love was this in the a- community. Was this an old line? This is an old old oh, line. Okay, okay, okay. This is an old line from the seventies. Gotcha. That was on the audience participation album gotcha. that carried through the years, and so it was kind of just an unconscious thing. No one yeah. brought it up, and I didn't bring it up. Yeah. But yeah, so that is Rocky Horror. The interactive audience participation part is the is the yeah. fun part. That's the party part, oh, yeah. and uh, my friends and I would lead the charge into it yeah. after a while and, and uh, most of the I folks that I know now out. in Johnson City that are around my age I probably met them back then Yeah, <laughs> I, I remember a local a guy a lot of people know uh, Brad Ward mm-hmm. was the little he was a little kid that That's kept right. going he was, talked about he that. was way too young yeah. to be at a rated R movie yeah. but still he was out there every night and he was always hey guys gonna hang out with you I mean I don't know Brad Ward seems like he's lived forever yeah. so yeah, maybe he, he wasn't too old no, he was young. he was the little kid then. He was the he was the little kid, and we were all the we were all the teenagers. You know, we were in, we were eighteen or so. It's like ah, kid, stay out of trouble. Ah, but we all adored the kid. 
Right. And uh, to this day, I adore seeing Brad. Uh, I've known him yeah. most of his life. And th- that's that was Rocky. That was Conapalooza. And then they had a drag show, which I, I love a good drag show. I've been to Parliament House in Orlando, mm-hmm. which is one of the largest, best drag shows in the country. Uh, after MGM Studios and Disney mm-hmm. World, the third highest grossing beer sales in Orlando, Florida, is Parliament House. Hey. <laughs> it's a hotel complex yeah. with just every flavor bar you can imagine. Yeah. I was very popular in the bear bar. Of course. And I'm like, guys, I'll be right back. I walked into the bear bar, talked around, got me some free drinks. As you do. Felt pretty. Walked out. Uh, okay, I was, I was, I was, I was kind of followed out, but well, of course. you know, like, hey, back off, guys. I'm not, I'm not that kind of guy. I just wanted some drinks. That's it. I mean, I just, I, I like that feeling, being able to walk in and get drinks. Yeah. I can nice get used feeling. to that. <laughs> yep. Oh, so. Is rock um to get just to get back to Rocky Horror Picture oh, right. Show, is that coming up? Yes, it's going on now. It is, and I have that one loaded up right here. Uh, is it this weekend. Oh, it's oh wait, this is uh, this is. I'm sorry. I thought she was talking about the John City Community Theater. She's actually linked to me. Uh, the cat. It's playing at the Capitol Theater in Greenville. In Greenville. I'm assuming Greenville, Tennessee. Yeah, Greenville, Tennessee. The Capitol was in a little. Strip mall, Mm -hmm. tiny little place. That could be a lot of fun. So for you all here in the chat room, that it's playing tomorrow and Saturday, it looked like? Uh, Yes. Um, From 9 p.m. to 12. Uh, It's a little early, but yeah, that's that's awesome. That's early? Yeah, well, it's a midnight movie. Well, it ends at midnight? Traditionally, it's supposed to start at midnight. Oh. That's That's probably why I've never seen it, because anytime someone says, let's go see a midnight movie, I'm like... I'm already in my no, in, in my I'm, giraffe pajamas. I'm in my giraffe pajamas. <laughs> I can't get out of it. I mean, what do you expect? And they're me like, to do? "Oh, she's in a giraffe pajamas." We can't. We can't disturb. That's her. all right. <laughs> but uh, this is at the Capitol Theater Greenville, which mm-hmm. is the actual movie, and it's going to be uh, oh. admission uh, is ten dollars. Admission with a prop bag, which you kind of need because back in my day, hey, back in my day, and Rocky Horror. You walked in with whatever you brought. And so we were like, I mean, I knew guys that would throw uh, uh, flour. And so the place would be filled with pl- flour. And then we lit lighters. We could have blown that place you up. You all could have blown I'm that place I'm not exaggerating. Up. And we didn't know. We were we were punk kids. But, yeah, so at the time, we did a lot of uns- I brought a tiki torch to a theater. I mean, I had a tiki torch that was this long, and it would flame up like that. And so when it was, they were there's a light. And yep. nobody said a thing. No, and unfortunately, you can't you can't yeah. carry tiki torches anywhere. Because anywhere you'll be, because you'll be obviously I must be a Nazi. I have a tiki torch. Yep. Take it back, people. Well, speaking for lounge com- torch. Speaking for lounge culture, take back the tiki. T- yeah, because the nineteen sixties are coming around again, yeah. like stylistically, and we really need the tiki torches. Yeah, that's really essential for the whole look. It really is. But uh, that's that's fun. The doors open at eight the night of the show at the Capitol in Greenville. Thank you, mm-hmm. Jennifer Bourbon, for uh, yeah sharing that with us. That's awesome. And lastly, uh, Jen Hagler shares uh, a couple of uh, witchy things coming up. Uh, the Harvest Home Ritual is Friday at Willow Springs Park, six thirty. Uh, I'll try to put these links on the hometown page. And uh, the Reiki share. Is going to be Saturday afternoon at uh, Samadhi Healing down on uh, Walnut Street, Johnson City. Uh, Jen is really, ta- she's a teacher by trade, mm-hmm. and she's really taken to offering a lot of uh, classes in uh, That's good. traditional, uh, I don't know if it's Wiccan-y, it's definitely kind of a witchy vibe. Well, I think all, all Reiki all the- is not, uh, I think it's just right. generally. And, and I don't think she's doing the Reiki ritual. class necessarily, yeah. but she's doing the home ritual. Yeah. And that's part of, that's part of her thing and a lot yeah. of the the Appalachian witchcraft stuff that she shares a lot of. It's very cool. And she's not the only person. That has actually, there's quite a trend yeah. for that kind of stuff right now. I don't know if it's oh, because yeah. Halloween's coming up or if there's just a, a, an expanded interest in that kind yeah. of thing. I'm glad to see it's so mainstream. It's yeah. not like it was in the 90s. It's very cool. Because in the 90s, there was a place that opened down on where Freiburg's is now. It was called uh, Moon's Magics. And oh. he sold herbs and yeah. uh, magical tinctures and... Uh, offered a lot of uh, uh, occult and Wiccan uh, literature. Yeah. 
and he's a nice guy, big beardy, burly guy, and uh, I talked to him a lot. You know, then like now, I don't really have much use for supernatural stuff, but uh, I'm, I'm very respectful of it. I'm I'm very fascinated yeah. with it. I want to yeah. understand what makes it tick because you understand a lot more about people if you understand their beliefs. Mm-hmm. And uh, Moon got run out of town. Oh. The whole, uh, the local churches, uh, the news, the media, uh, they, they kept painting them to be something they weren't. They were just trying to sell exactly. herbs. And they were just trying to have... It's no different really from Atlantis with their essential it, oils. It's the truth. And, and at the time, Atlantis was already an old bu- business already. They had oh, already been around that. forever. Yeah, Atlantis used to be over on the Bristol Highway heading out of town. And I would drive over there just to shop there. And then they moved downtown. It's still been years and years ago they moved downtown. But yeah, Atlantis had already been around. But Atlantis is more of a new, a new age and mm-hmm. general stuff. And moons would have just tables of herbs. Yeah. And tables of that kind of stuff laying out. And people just got bent out of shape. And it was as ridiculous now as it is as it was then. Because yeah. he wasn't hurting anyone. He wasn't trying to do anything. Yeah. He was just trying to make a living. Which is a good segue to uh, let's talk about judgment houses. When I was. I guess my early 20s, I had a lot of friends that went to a church not far from where I grew up. Mm-hmm. Well, and if you're from here, all your friends go to a church <laughs> it's that's truth. not far from where you grew up. It's the truth. <laughs> so. And so uh, I've, I'm like, guys, I'm really, I'm not, I hadn't been religious my entire life. I've, uh, my parents were, were make your own decisions. Mm-hmm. We, we expect you to try it <laughs> and then decide. So I, I had to go as a kid. Uh, I got kicked out of a church as a kid and ashamed out out into the streets literally and I was really young and probably not a good idea to leave a kid out like that but um, you know I just never bought into it I always respected it whatever anybody wants okay as long as it doesn't hurt anybody and so my friends were like ah come on we're going to go to the judgment house and then we're going to go on and do something else I was like it's not really my thing but alright I've never done one I'll do anything and uh, went to it and Basically, it was warning me about the uh, the evils of homosexuality, uh, the uh, how awful it is to have any kind of sex at all before marriage, uh, all of the stereotypical, judgmental, <laughs> judgment bullshit. Yeah, and it painted everyone that participated in this kind of behavior as a, a monstrous puppet of the devil. Yeah. Uh, uh, of a person that has no free will, that they are being uh, uh, led to this uh, evil against their will. Right. And so there's the point of the one I went to. There was there was no no personal uh, decision making to it. You were compelled. Which is weird, because the ones I have known of, um, and I have been to one. And it was horrific. And not horrific in the fun Halloween kind of way. Yeah. It was like, you do have a choice. You're not being compelled. And you're going to go to hell. And oh, burn wow. forever. There, that, was a, that was a recurring theme in this one. Uh, it's like, since you're going to burn forever, <laughs> that was the... Yeah. Let's just assume you're, you are going to burn forever. Yeah. And here's what hell will look like for you. And a lot have of... Have fun r- being compelled. Red light bulbs and uh, paper representing flame and, and screams and you know actually i would have loved to go through that one and be like oh this isn't so bad I, that's the, the that was me i was and like uh, and and cool you know lighting <laughs> and this one had the, the, at the time it had a, a narrative it was about this young guy who made a decision uh to uh, it started off to to wear uh his own type of clothes mm-hmm. not dressed like normal people and then uh, from that, he decided to smoke a marijuana cigarette and became a drug addict. Oh my God, and then course. from that, he ended up uh, having sex with a girl, and he caught like ten types of of, of different venereal diseases, and uh, got her pregnant, and uh, became su- I don't know. It, it just kept right. on adding every stereotypical right. thing, and it was like you're a bad person. And the, the only way that you can possibly not be a bad person uh, is to insert standard dogma here. Yeah. You're, you're, you're going to have to uh, go to church. And, you know, a lot of people, that's great. I mean, if you're, oh. if you're really in a, in a situation where you're at rock bottom 
and you're just self-destructive, if you find religion and that's going to stop you from being self-destructive, go for it. Make that your life's work. But telling these kids... I think that borders on child abuse. Yeah, they, the worst part, and the part that got me the worst, was the entire section about uh, the evils of homosexuality and the homosexual agenda, which was just... I, I can't even do justice to the homophobia yeah. that this show. The, the, the caricature that the person who was playing the homosexual was like a bad caricature from 1960s television. Jesus. And it was uh, basically about euthanizing them because they ended up killing the homosexual. What? To save, to save our main character. They ended up killing the homosexual to save him from their, their predatory ways. Who killed them? Uh, it was a whole nother thing. The oh, good gotcha. guy. There were good guys in this one and bad guys. It was a series of vignettes. So forget forget the you know thou shalt not kill. Doesn't count apparently. Doesn't count in that particular case. Um. But hmm. the the walking away from it instead of a, a horrific you know I'm that that was creepy and yeah, yeah scriptures have, would would say. The, these are the things that if I'm not living to be a good person, you know, don't kill. Use the Ten Commandments. You can make a great horror house out of it. Well, it's like what? Uh, lucky number seven? Yeah. <laughs> and But the point is, with, with the Ten Commandments, it's really hard to say you really shouldn't <clears throat> you really shouldn't use the Ten Commandments as a basis for your haunted house because th- there's some moral ambiguity there. No. Yeah. Ten Commandments are, I think most people can agree, it's a pretty good philosophical guide. They didn't yes. do that. Leave out the dogma. Leave out the dogma, but it's a philosophical guide, I think, yeah. as to, be, to be a decent person. This yeah. was nothing but a political statement and most to of further are. their political causes and make people fear and hate someone more than they already did when they came in. And in my, in my experience, that's what they, most of them are. Yeah. I, I will say, I'm trying to look it up now, if I could. Um, there was, I think it was a New York Times article... But there was a judgment house that I really could get behind. Um, it was, it like, took you into, like, the homes of third world people and refugees. Like, it showed. Oh, wow. Like, it was more like, it wasn't for Halloween, I don't think. It was just, like, a like a, an experience for Christians to go in and see what actually being Christ-like would be like. Yeah. So it's called now, the Judgment that's, House. That's brilliant. That is cool. Like, yeah, that's if brilliant. you can show, like, this is what a typical refugee lives in when they get into a refugee camp, and you can show them in person so they can see it. Right. That I get. That is cool. But yeah, that dogma, that politicizing shit, I I personally cannot stand that. I can't, I can't, I can't stand it. it. I can't stand it in any religion. Like, it just makes me get so outraged. Yeah, and especially targeted towards teens and kids like right. this and one was. Right, and that's what particularly drives me crazy. If, if I could go through one and come out kind of uplifted, I don't have to agree or be interested in the dogma right. behind it. But if I, if I come out going, yeah, I should really be better to people. Right. That would be awesome. I would love would to go awesome. through a, a church horror uh, experience like that. Yeah. But, I, but when the point of your judgment house is to have people coming out afraid of homosexuals well, and, and and against any yeah. kind of uh, 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 birth control yeah. and you know which go ahead. is just dumb I'm just going to say sure. it. it's just dumb if you don't want to use it don't use it but don't scare teenagers who are going to have sex Yeah. Christian, non-Christian, they're probably I wish abstinence would work. It doesn't. But you can't... Pe- study after study after study after study after study after study has shown that it doesn't work. Just teaching it yeah. doesn't work. Sorry. And, and, but, and <laughs> again, that, that is my, my point. All of this bad advice that is just trying to make a, a, a political movement stronger instead of making... And I know, they think... They think they're making the moral fiber of the people that go through even better because this is the stuff that the Bible says that are not getting the attention we think it, yeah. it gets. That's I, I understand their point of view, but is really making people come out feeling this negativity 
the way that you want to run right. your public service. And the way I think of it, along the same vein is, the way I think of it is, if you... You shouldn't be in any religion just because you're scared of the consequences of not being. And that almost goes for any situation you're in your whole life. That's true. That is true. That's beyond religion. That's just everything. And if you're a Christian because you're afraid of hell, or if you are a Christian because you got scared that you might have feelings for the same sex, and you are afraid of hell, so you're going to suppress it and marry someone and make them miserable for years and years and years and years, and, you know, if that's why you're trying to do the right thing and be follow a certain philosophy, that's not a good way to come to, especially Christ. Like, I grew up in the Christian church. I'm not religious now. Um, and that's prob- partially probably why it just gets out of my skin so much. But if that is why you're a Christian, because you're scared of hell, I don't think Christ would like that. Because Christ wants you to come with love. Right. And to give love. Right. Not because you're afraid that you're going to be damned to eternity right. in hell. He never taught blessed are the, are the heterosexuals. Right. Off of my soapbox. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, I, we've, I've had a little bourbon. We, this is bourbon bailey. <laughs> I always try to save the good stuff for when bourbon bailey comes bourbon out. Bourbon bailey comes out. <laughs> Got, we, we may have hit a, 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 one of my big buttons. It becomes the bourbon and bailey circus. The, oh, ha! I love that. See what that. I did there? I love that. <laughs> we have giraffes. I need to start a new show. I love it. The Bourbon, the and, bourbon Bailey, and Bailey Circus. Just Bailey getting ripped and ranting. I love can, it. I'll set you oh up. Oh my God. I'll be your producer. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, like, if they can be done right, go ahead. It's yeah. cool. Cool idea. I mean, the world needs more, more love and loving philosophy i guess is the best way to put it more whatever more positive stuff that says hey just oh. take care of your <laughs> well, our ratings just went through the roof <laughs> bourbon bailey really is out my finger got stuck in my little thing <laughs> bailey almost came out but yeah um yeah and and so you know if you've seen any like this we'd love to hear your experiences again we're not I'm really trying hard to not come down hard on a line either way, but I don't know of any other any other religious structures that so directly try to it, it, it seems like entertainment, uh, but a lot of a lot of the stuff I've seen I've been to a couple others since that particular and that was the worst one I'd, I'd ever seen and they all tend to have the same uh, negativity the, the yeah. same condemning differences and yeah. the same you know, you've heard it all. We're not going to get into right. politics here. Believe me, we could. But we're not. DJ Ray. Pumpkin spice rum. <laughs> <laughs> rum. The rum punch? I don't know. No, I'm trying to think. Uh, I was trying to think of a good nickname for you. Oh, was... uh, nicknames don't stick easily, easily to me. I know, but I'm Bur- Bourbon Bailey. <laughs> you are Bourbon Bailey. Sambuca Shannon. Uh, ooh. I don't know. Give me some Sambuca. <laughs> Um, yeah, that's uh, because yeah. that's life horror. That's that's it is because I remember going to church as a little kid and being horrified by just the things I was taught. Yeah, uh, and it stuck like I legit even now I haven't been religious for fifteen years maybe maybe a little bit more, um, but even now I still sometimes like when I am driving somewhere and I don't see anyone on the roads. Where there should be people, my first thought is maybe it's the apocalypse. Wow! Because it's just—I don't believe it, but it's just still the first thing that right. like just pops into my head. It's a training. And as a kid, that is horrifying. I was so afraid of the apocalypse when I was a kid. Wow! Like legit terrified. Um, you know. When and I was a kid. We went to uh, my, well, my aunts would take me to. My parents never made us go to church. It was. It was. I mean. They did a couple times, but they learned the error of those ways with me. Yeah, like, no. Nope. But uh, my aunt would uh, try to get us to go to church with her, and she's a lovely lady. One of the, my family, my, my dad's extended family, all of them, extremely re- religious, beautiful people. Uh, absolutely the most generous hearts and the most caring people you'll ever meet. However, 
I would go to the, it was a second Baptist church, and it was in a surrounding town. It wasn't in Johnson City. And the preacher there was this old fire and brimstone Baptist preacher who was, and keep in mind, I grew up in the 70s in Johnson City. Racism was accepted, and it wasn't even considered racism at the time. It was just, uh, that's the way the world was. And you talked about, uh, you know, other you talk about any kind of uh, differences as someone that's less than even the poorest of the people around here. And we were not the richest of the people. And so this preacher would go on to rods against, you know, uh, the gays were not really much of a, a, a subject in the 70s. Nobody had thought about it, apparently. And, and, and at least no or one talked still, about it. It was no still talked under about the rug. Yeah. No one talked about it. Yeah. But he would go off on this racial thing. I would ask questions in in church, like, why, if we're supposed to love, and you just told us about this whole thing about loving one another and forgiving one another, why can't we do that to someone at, at, that you just said someone that's black may not believe in this and may not be held to it? And he didn't like my questions, so he's like, well, you Well, no, because he doesn't have an answer. And I, I, was, I became a pariah at the age of five. Yeah. <laughs> Because I was asking questions that weren't popular. I didn't really mean anything by it. I was too young. You're too, you're just asking questions. But you're like, this doesn't make sense. I've always had this analytical mind, and it never, it just never yeah. made sense to me. Because my grandfather loved, I mean, he loved everybody. I mean, he invited hobos to his house. and Oh, yeah. Anybody that was down their luck, anybody that was standing on a street corner, mm-hmm. he did not care. He would still have the mouth of somebody that sounded like the biggest racist you've ever seen. But when it came time to act... Yeah. It was always, it's just a person, and they could need some help, and I'm, yeah. I'm here to, to help people. And, I, and I, I, try to, I, I try to take the best parts of my grandfather and my dad yeah. in that way, in that if somebody needs help, offer the help. If, <laughs> if they need help and they've made their own bad decisions and they're not willing to do the work to get themselves out of it, probably can't help them. Yeah. And it's just one of those things. So I, I, I'm more of a believe in people will do the right thing, and if they don't, I'll do the right thing for him. <laughs> that's good. That's, yeah, that's good. That's all I can do. I can't control anybody right. else's way of thinking. I can only right. control my reaction to it. Well, we're reaching, eh, we're not quite an hour, but uh, I think we've just about exhausted all we can say without really, truly offending people. Well, and we'd also have to, I, I just imagine us doing our normal thing where we were like, oh, we'll talk about this for seven minutes, and yeah. then <laughs> a half an hour goes by, and we go, right. oh, sorry. <laughs> But yeah, they're probably our our most uh, controversial. I'm, I'm, yeah. I hope that everybody understands that this was uh, all done in just looking at the situation. We're not insulting anybody. We're not trying to uh, say anyone's. Yeah. Well, okay. I mean, I'm, I'm totally saying somebody's <laughs> wrong. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm totally saying they are in the wrong, leaving people with uh, such a negative, fearful mentality, in my opinion. But it's it's. Uh, a matter of education to me and not a matter of evil or immutable good everybody can make a change if they want to you just have to want to be a better change and you got to really look at what you believe to make sure if you're believing it in a way that is going to help everyone or if it's going to be a way to help yourself at the expense of someone and also you can better yourself without it being religious yeah or not being christian and i say christian because we live in the south Right. And that's what you're expected to be. I'll, I'll, I'll just say religious. I mean, yeah. Uh, I've, I know people of many denominations, many faiths, and uh, none of it really applies to me and, and my own personal beliefs. I have a spiritual belief. I don't know if that counts, but that's kind of my own flavor. And it's respectful of the teachings of everything else. So it might as well, I guess you can say I incorporate a little of everything as long as everything is the best in people. Yeah. When it comes to judging others and and uh, saying this is right and this is wrong, that's when I start asking questions, yeah. and that's why a lot of people think I'm a pain in the ass. Because absolutes are rarely truths. That is true. What is it? Uh, there's this really good podcast, uh, semi-related, um, that does medical history and all the terrible things we used to do, and um, one of their taglines is, you know, if it's uh, if it says it's a cure all, it cures nothing. Yeah, yeah, 
<laughs> and again, that's another phrase that applies to so much in life. Yeah. There's no easy way out. There's no quick fix. There's no magic wand. If there was, the world would have been a better place long before now. It's true. All there is is people yeah. making the best decisions you can. And all you can do is make the best decision for everybody, not just for yourself. Uh, <laughs> DJ Ray, we love you too. I am yeah. what? Uh, don't just tell me. Are. I don't want to know. It probably involves being a megalomaniac. Oh, pain in the ass. Oh. You said you were pain in the oh, ass. Oh, well, yeah. Yeah, DJ Ray's seen it. He's seen me get to that point where it's like, you people, you, everyone here has just been really selfish and they're think, not thinking of themselves and they're not thinking of this audience of a thousand people and I've had enough and I have said everyone's straight and gone rogue and left everybody in the dust because the right thing yeah. is not hard to do. Although apparently for some people it's really hard to identify. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Sadly. So people first. Take care of your locals and yeah. they'll take care of you. On that cherry note. Yeah. Well, thank you for joining us on yeah. this slightly more deep than usual yeah. uh, extra, but that's the nature of the extras. Uh, we can do whatever we want. Exactly. If you don't like it, don't watch it. Uh, you've always. That's why we have the the episode. Yeah. Is all fun and games, and uh, that'll always be a lot lighter than the extras. Uh, I Next have... week we get into euthanasia. <laughs> yeah, that'll be fun, <laughs> won't it? I've been shooting video all week. <laughs> all right. Sorry. <laughs> uh, you, you doing anything this upcoming week? Mm. Oh, booze and booze is tomorrow. All right. That I might go do. To, well, it was it was three know. days ago. Right. Um, <laughs> so I might. What do that. are you? Did you do this weekend? <laughs> are you? Is the question I got. Yeah, yeah. I don't know yet. <laughs> by, by now, I would have already uh, done the fire show at Leaf. That's the fire mm -hmm. show I helped write, and I was there yesterday. Uh, watched, we did rehearsal twice. I left my jacket in Johnson City. It was 41 degrees yeah, out at that freaking lake. Oh, really? I was, I'm a big hairy guy, and I was fine for the first couple hours, but the last couple hours, that cold was getting into yeah. me. But I had to sit there, and uh, I had a wet blanket, so I had gloves on. So my, oh, my, my hands were freezing, even with gloves. Uh, but the fire show, they have done such a great job. They're, they're telling a story about... Uh, uh, it's about understanding and acceptance and nice. differences and coming together in the end. And they tell it all through fire and dance, uh, through through the soundtrack that I've been editing for them. So I've not I've never done anything like this show. If you're if you're at Lake Eden Arts Festival this weekend, give me a send me a message. I'll be there. Uh, I'm gonna be there all day Saturday. I won't be there much more than that. But there's a lot of great bands, yeah. uh, hippie. All kinds of hippie uh, booths. So if you need moccasins, if you need uh, a natural uh, uh, clothing that's handmade, uh, I, I can I can set you up. Uh, I can't wait for that. I'm I'm looking Sounds forward to it. It's gonna be a little a little chilly, but the fire show. I'm gonna it's gonna be awesome. very proud. And word is no promises yet that we may be bringing the fire show show to the first Friday. So it may not be this exact show because. Honestly, I don't know if First Friday can afford the entire uh, performance that they're doing at Leaf, but uh, there's a whole bunch of amazing performers mm -hmm. with uh, Unifier Theater, and uh, it's, I'm, I'm probably speaking out of turn because I just uh, introduced them uh, to start talking about it, but I have a feeling that this is going to be likely, so that'll be a really great show if you're going to be at First Friday. You want to catch Unifier Theater. They only have uh, two or three performers, oh, gotcha. but they're all great at what they do. And I may, I may be there, there doing fire uh, safety because That's I live cool. here. Yep. Yeah. It would be nice to have them drive an hour for a show. Yeah, for change. That's right. <laughs> Earn your keep, people. Right. And that's all i got coming up. So mm -hmm. thank you for joining us for another week of Hometown East Tennessee fun. Uh, we had our episode 12. This is the episode 12 extra. Mm -hmm. uh, if you're just getting here realizing this is the episode 12 extra, you've really gotten lost on YouTube. Or you're on, yeah, that's right, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Then you just show up and it's a girl in a, a weird leopard giraffe uniform. <laughs> oh, DJ Ray says he wishes he could be a Leaf, but he's doing Derby. Yeah, unfortunately, after I'd already booked Leaf, uh, I were, uh, my my official home team is Blue Ridge Roller Girls in Asheville. They're having their year-end uh, uh, so a party. They have awards oh, nice. and thank all their volunteers and stuff. And 
I would be I would be there, but I've mm-hmm. got to do the fire show, so I'm I'm yeah. at Leaf. So have fun there, DJ Ray. Yep. I'll be thinking about you. I don't have any cell service at Leaf, so that's also very relaxing. Yeah, that's I, nice. I can't sit there and stare at my phone. I have to like interact with the world. Hi. Yeah, it's so weird sitting around actually talking to people, and they can't get away from me. That is odd. Yeah. So, again, uh, I keep wrapping up and then forgetting about it. Home County <laughs> Sinity Extra, thanks for joining us again. Yep. We'll be back next Thursday, 8 o'clock. Mm-hmm. It'll be episode 13, and that's going to be the special Halloween that's episode. That's perfect. Yeah. 13? That's, that's about right, isn't it? Just uh. So, uh, the Halloween episode is going to have haunts and happenings and weird history of Johnson City. Costumes. And costumes, and we'll see what else we can do. Maybe we'll have... Uh, oh, actually, I'm not going to say. I've got, I've got an idea of some... Uh, Internet wizardry just to have a little fun. We'll see. Until then. I'll see you soon.